Seaver, everybody. We'll just jam for a while. Let's get this Hey. Hey, Golden Stelly, how you doing? Yeah, having a good night? Let's have some energy. Let's hear you guys. All right. You guys, that was totally a rape joke. You know that, right? Hold on, wait a minute. Fight club, we gotta fight to get the mic out. Uh, was anybody else surprised when they found out that the, on the side of the bottle where it says alcohol might intensify effects is a warning on your medication? I thought that was sort of like a benefit. It's not supposed to be. Uh, I'll tell you what, I'm a parent. I've got two kids, and my kids are 10 and 14. And I know that you're not supposed to have favorites, but one can talk and one can't. <laughs> you guys figure out which one's my favorite. <laughs> Something I learned as a parent, I don't know if you know this, it takes 42 muscles in your face to frown at your child. It takes one Xanax to shut them up and get some peace and quiet. <laughs> one for them, two for me. I don't mean to sound harsh, I do love my children. We have two, like I said. Actually, we didn't intend to have two. Uh, the second child wasn't as much an attempt to have a child as it was an attempt to get back to sleep. Mm -hmm. It was one of those really hot, humid pre dawn Sunday mornings, and the neighborhood kids were playing Bing Dong Bitch. And they got us. <sighs> they woke us up. Couldn't get back to sleep when we're laying there. It's like, what do you want to do? Do you want to do it? Sure. Nine months later, I went and found those kids. <laughs> Look what you did! Because Ding Dong Ditch has consequences. <laughs> Children should know that. You know what? We got, we got Ding Dong Dicked. <laughs> well, that's what happened to us. <laughs> I'm a little worried about the 10 year old. It's my daughter. She's getting into trouble. She's being defiant, pushing back, saying no to people like parents and teachers. I said, you can't do that. You can't say no to your parents, teachers, things like that. Next time you do that, I'm going to take a dollar from your piggy bank. Oh, and she had an epic tantrum. It was quite the drama. She said to me, I can't believe you would take a dollar from my college fund. And I said, whoa, I can't believe you think there's a college fund. <laughs> that's not, that's a very town. Like she's 10, even if I start now, what do we got? Community college at best, right? That's not worth it, let's just spend the money and have fun. That's what I say. Uh, I got a call from a neighbor recently. They caught my daughter with a group of other kids in a yard lighting a fight. Wow, oh, that was alarming. I was concerned until I talked to her about it, and she told me the reason for the fire. It was an initiation. I'm completely unconcerned about the fire now, but I'm terrified of the coven that my daughter joined. This little doll she's got that looks like me. That's scary. Uh, we have any Catholics here? Anybody Catholic? You guys raised Catholic? I was raised Catholic. Uh, I don't know if you know it, when you're Catholic, you get communion. What communion is, is a free pass. Basically, if you do something wrong, you go to church, say you're sorry, they give you a cookie, and, uh, and it's all good. <laughs> Except here's what happened when I was a kid. Uh, I stole all the communion right before mass. <laughs> and sat in a bathroom and just ate the whole thing. Just no, no, no. And I got busted. And that priest, boy, he wanted to punish me. But what could he do? I'd already been forgiven. Like, a lot. All he could do before Mass was bless pita chips and hope that was going to pass. Like, Hail Mary, damn kids. And I'm like, pita chips, that way better. I wish I'd stolen those. <laughs> Not what you can do. I'll tell you what, that's a lot of fiber, though. Later on, holy crap. All right, I'm going to get out of here on one thing. Uh, I've got a buddy of mine. She's a fellow comedian named Kate Urquhart, and she'd love to be here tonight, but she's sick, and she can't be here, so I'm going to exit doing a joke for her. That's actually one of her jokes, and it's a life model. Ladies and gentlemen, after you leave tonight, I would like you to go, and when you go to work tomorrow, be 
the HR incident that you would like to read about in the company newsletter. <laughs> Have a great night. Thanks for coming out. Give it up for James King. I love that music. Lainey, can you hear me in the back? You can hear me in the back? Okay, that's good, that's good. Just wanna make sure, it's kinda hard to hear. How y'all doing this evening, y'all doing good? Yeah, just, yeah, okay, all right. I guess it's gonna be that type of evening. Okay, that's fine, that's fine. Well, I came to talk to y'all about donuts tonight. That's why I'm here. That is the exact reason why I'm here. I love donuts. They're good. <laughs> They're quite tasty. <laughs> Here's how good donuts are. <laughs> donuts have holes in them. Big, gaping holes in them. And nobody ever says, where's the rest of my donut? You want to sell me a product with a hole in it? No, no one says that. You know what they say? Hey, give me a box of those. <laughs> That's what they say. And I love donuts and they're good, but here's, donuts are bad as well. Like one jelly donut has 300 calories. 90% of the calories are from fat and carbs. Like you have to eat a donut and be like, I don't mind having a double chin. <laughs> Muffin top, hey, everybody loves muffin top. Check it out, baby, it's right in here, right in here. I remember when I was a wee lad, you know, that's not expressing you as much that day, but I was a wee lad, and I remember going to Bible study with my mom, and at the end of service, they'd have juice and donuts. All the kids would line up and wait for the pastor to say amen, and we'd take off at breakneck speed into the fellowship hall, and we would ramsack them donuts if it wasn't for old lady Blanche. <laughs> she would shake a, like a meaty finger at us. You kids, wait for the, wait for the grown-ups. And it was a meaty finger. Like it was the type of finger that could feed a family of five for two months. Just meaty. One day the old lady Blanche wasn't there and we had a donut fiesta. Oh, it was wonderful. We had sombreros and mariachis. We picked them up from Home Depot. They played music, bam, 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 bam. But we had a wet t-shirt contest. There was a kid in the back jumping juice on himself like he just won the World Series. Those were good times. Good times, love donuts. You know, there are some things that are just too, too good to be true. I take, for example, there's a uh, study out there that says chocolate has health benefits. Have any of you heard this? No, no, just me. Yeah, you have heard it. Did you, when you heard it, did you like, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to lose weight, I'm gonna get my broccoli, I got my carrots and my chocolate. I'll be looking real good, uh, real good. No, you can do that? I didn't think so. But they say uh, chocolate has health benefits, like it's good for the cardiovascular and the blood pressure, but you know, I, I, I don't know how good that is because I don't know any doctor that's given out prescriptions for cocoa. <laughs> like can you imagine having your physical exam and then finding out that you have high blood pressure and the doctor says to you, you know, we're gonna have to put you on a couple of medications. The first one is a diuretic called hydrochlorothiazide, and the second one is Snickers. <laughs> and then they say if you want the health benefits, you have to eat chocolate in moderation. Them two words don't belong together in the same sentence. That's like a double negative in grammar. Chocolate moderation. Sounds like an oxymoron. It's like a humble athlete. That's like scoring a touchdown and then being like, you know what? I'm not going to even celebrate. Here you go, ref. Take the ball. But here's how you really get the health benefits from chocolate. You have to eat dark chocolate. Have you ever had this before? Oh my goodness, it tastes like they forgot some ingredients. <laughs> All right, look, we got cocoa, sugar, uh, emulsifier. Where's the milk? I don't know. Wrap it up and sell it. Just write dark chocolate on it, but make sure dark is in real tiny letters. 
And that's how they get you, because you'll go and buy a candy bar, and then you bite into it, and you're like, ugh, what is this, tree bark? I'm just saying, if you want health benefits from chocolate, don't eat it. My name is James Keenan, take it easy, peace. Everybody loves James, everybody loves James. I'm telling you, bro. James King, everybody. Everybody loves James King. That's just how it goes. Yeah, he's a funny fucking guy. All right, our next topic for the evening, a uh, very funny guy as well. Everybody give it up for Rob Larson. Going, hello, hello. All right, I'm gonna jump into it here. I, uh, I have a problem with my washing machine. It's racist. I can't do a load without separating the whites from the coloreds. Uh, at least my dryer's cool though. Uh, cool meaning it takes roughly 10 to 20 hours to dry anything, uh, no matter what the color is. Oh, hey mom, no flash photography please, thank you. <laughs> I, uh, I've had to make some recession sacrifices, kind of like everyone else. I, uh, I do my grocery shopping at Aldi because they have cheap ramen. I, uh, I take five minute showers because frivolous water use is for the one percenters. And uh, I recently had to stop my symbolic adoption of Franklin. He's an endangered Bengal tiger uh, through the Wild World Wildlife Foundation. That one hurt. Uh, all right, that was a bad one, I messed it up. Okay, okay. I, uh, I have a smartphone, I think everyone has a smartphone nowadays. Um, it has all of my contacts and the internet inside of it, okay? But phone books still appear on my front steps. At first I thought maybe I had ordered them, uh, but I don't order out of date, useless things. Then I thought maybe they were intended for my neighbor. Uh, I've gotten his horrific porn before, um, but that's not the case. Now I just am left to believe that someone out there is challenging me to a phone book ripping competition, a, uh, a feats of strength, if you will. I don't know, it's really the only logical conclusion left. Whenever someone says, long story short, one of two things has happened. A, they realize that their story sucks. B, they realize that they suck at storytelling. Uh, no one in history has ever been like, I was supersonically approaching the heavens in my fighter jet, evading enemy missile lock and the 60 millimeter cannons that were shooting at me. My heart was pumping with adrenaline. And uh, well, long story short, parachute, reserve parachute, met Obama. <laughs> I was recently denied entrance into the Outback Steakhouse. Uh, the Outback Steakhouse. Uh, it wasn't because I was intoxicated. Uh, it wasn't because I was being rude or obnoxious. I wasn't, I was calm, cool, and collected. It was uh, mainly because, um, well, you can't bring a machete anywhere nowadays. Uh, it was she, obviously, I'm not an idiot. I, uh, I used to work at Jimmy John's. Um, I would uh, take the orders, you know, people would call in, take the order, and then people would give me their credit card number to pay for the order. Uh, but a lot of people had awful credit card rhythm. Instead of four, three, four, two, it was 43, 42, blah, blah, blah. This kind of got annoying. So I started uh, repeating the number back to them just to make sure I had gotten it correctly. I would say, uh, all right, it's four, 342,666,220,000 with an expiration date of two years and 18 months from uh, last June. Uh, like I said, I, I used to work at Jimmy John's. Uh, I'll leave you guys with this one. Um, there's a stat floating around that says, you burn the same amount of calories playing one game of golf as you do having sex. Um, this stat's crazy though, because seriously, who can play around with golf in 30 seconds? <laughs> Thank you. Rob Larson, everybody, keep it going for him. Everybody give it up for Elizabeth A. 
Congrats. How's everyone doing? How's everyone doing tonight? <laughs> Delayed reaction. That's okay. It's what Tuesday, something like that. Uh, so I've been trying online dating recently. New year, new disappointments ahead of me. I'm excited. <laughs> But I'm trying to have fun with it. Uh, I filled out my profile like a Mad Libs. Yeah. Like, I'm 17 feet tall. Uh, my favorite food is hiccups, that kind of thing. Uh, and I got a response, a guy messaged me and he said, you're a really cute girl, but you don't seem like you're taking this very seriously. Let me know when you get serious about finding a boyfriend. Isn't that just the weirdest thing ever? Like. How are you giving me an ultimatum? I'm a 97-year-old woman. I don't have to take this shit. <sighs> I'm more serious about getting the McDonald's before the breakfast cut off. <laughs> Things matter, and I know about that. Because I'm a woman and not a girl. Get the McDonald's, you get your hash browns. Uh, but maybe I should get more serious about getting a boyfriend. I found out about the statistic where over the course of a, of a lifetime, cost of living is a million dollars more for single women. I didn't know cats ate that much. <laughs> maybe if you have like 17, maybe then. But if you share your Ben and Jerry's with them, that's got to cut that down a couple hundred thousand. Yeah, I think so. Um, once I do get serious about dating, I think I'll be okay because, well, other comics, they tell me I'm, I'm pretty. And I know they don't mean pretty pretty, I, they mean comedy pretty. Like, it's like being the best Mexican food in Burnsville. <laughs> like, that's great in Minnesota, but it doesn't mean shit in Guadalajara, you know? Um, oh, the other day, uh, I was at Planned Parenthood. I had to pay my little sister's tab. It was a doozy. That, I hope she's having fun, is all I want to say. Uh, <laughs> And I think women who bring their boyfriends to Planned Parenthood are just showing off. <laughs> like, congratulations, you found someone who follows through with those bad decisions. <laughs> Way to go. <laughs> um, I don't go to Planned Parenthood for myself. I'm, I'm celibate. I'm riding the celibacy train, I guess. Uh, it's a bumpy ride. In my opinion, it could be bumpier. <laughs> Um, I'm not celibate for religious reasons. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in Kanye West. Um, I just want to figure out what I want in a boyfriend. My last boyfriend, he was uh, a bigger guy, and not big in the enjoyable way. Uh, am I right, ladies? Um, he's big like a waterbed. And waterbeds are fun, but in this situation, you have to like a waterbed that, you know, sweat a lot and owed you money. <laughs> but you just stab it once and boom, you're done. <laughs> that was a murder joke. Maybe, I don't know, I didn't say. Um, so, I mentioned I was an atheist and I do have some Christian friends. They are diminishing, I will admit that. I am arrogant and obnoxious. Uh, and they say to me, why don't they teach about, you know, creationism? creationism in schools, like in textbooks and stuff alongside evolution. And I think, for me, that's pretty simple. Like dinosaurs, for instance, they leave really good clues. God doesn't leave good clues. Like dinosaurs leave their own bones and footprints and stuff that we can look at and be like, yep, there were dinosaurs. God leaves stuff like George W. Bush, and Jin, and Gangnam Style. I'm not MacGyver. I can't put this together and form any kind of theory here. <laughs> um, yeah, my dad's not super comfortable with me being uh, an atheist. He said the only unforgivable sin is not believing in God. It's like, well, that's not fair. I'm being punished for basically guessing wrong. It's like I'm playing a game of Clue and I guessed it was Colonel Mustard in the library with the rope and that it was actually God in Africa with the AIDS. <laughs> I'm more of a Mad Libs person. I'm sorry. <laughs> you guys have been great. I've been Elizabeth Lass. Thank you so much. Elizabeth Lass, everybody. Keep it going, Barb. Ever give it up for Tom Bonnet.
Yeah, thank you for that. Moving kind of slow, back problems. Recently had my fifth back surgery. And here my ex-wife said I had no spine. Take that, ladies. I'm in increasingly bad shape. I didn't know how bad a shape I was in until I was walking by a cop and his dog recently. Dog got very excited, started jumping on me. I asked the cop, drug sniffing? He said, no, cadaver. God, I didn't think it was that bad yet. Uh, we're being filmed tonight. That's a little bit uh, extra layer to the nervousness up here. I have a friend who does a lot of public speaking. He said it helps him to quell his nerves to imagine the audience in their underwear. He's an elementary school teacher. I think we'll be reading about him one day soon. Probably not teacher of the year. Had an awkward situation at work yesterday. A coworker approached me and said, hey, Tom, I thought about you this weekend. I said, hey, I thought about you too. Turns out she wasn't masturbating. <laughs> Context. People get really worked up about strange stuff at my job. There was somebody really angry in the break room today. I'm like, what's the problem? She said, somebody left their food in the microwave. Like, That's not a problem. Just cook it till they show up. Same principle applies to the dryers in my apartment building. 100% silk, I'd say 90 minutes on high. Uh, I was born premature, which set the tone for my orgasms. <laughs> At least that's what I'm blaming. I uh, do not have children, by the way, which is surprising. I've had sex like a dozen times, so dodged a bullet there. It's probably a good thing I didn't have kids. I frequently think of the disappointed look my father got in his face sometimes. Got to the point toward the end of his life where I wouldn't even talk to him. i just tell mom, well, I'll give dad my best or at least the mediocrity we've come to recognize is my best. So, sorry dad. Elizabeth referenced dating. I can always tell when my Facebook friends are dating each other because her relationship status changes to in a relationship and his doesn't. I guess that one needs work, sorry about that. I'm having trouble dating. I bought a three-way light bulb, but I haven't got to use it because I haven't found two chicks that are into it. Thank you, a little menage a joke. I'm divorced um, twice, actually, very divorced twice. And when I burn myself in the stove, I touch all the burners because I'm dumb and don't learn. I don't plan to get married again, but if I do, we're gonna register a rent-a-center since it's all going back anyway. <laughs> I've discovered I'm inadvertently waging a war on women one marriage at a time. It's kind of sad. I don't know, man, I can't get married again. I don't want to lie to one more father-in-law about enjoying hunting. Take it from someone who knows you want to make a father-in-law's day, show up at the deer opener in a blaze orange sweater vest. Yeah, they love that. I'm the kind of son-in-law that gets accidentally killed on hunting trips. Execution style. <laughs> My name's Tom Bonnet. Thanks for coming to Comedy Fight Club. The very manly Tom Bonnet, everybody. Everybody give it up for Lady Lennox. Hi, everybody. I'm Lainey. Hello. Usually you have to wait until, until you have to start talking for them to turn the music off. It took me a while to figure that out though. So like every time they play music when I come up, I start doing like something like the Wiggles would do. It's just like <laughs> um, <laughs> So I'll tell some jokes. Um, you guys are probably from Minnesota. <laughs> um, I think Minnesota's funny. I was walking down the street in Minneapolis the other day and this guy looked at me and he was like, hey, 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 I like your vu. But he finished his sentence, he was like, I like your vibrancy, young lady. <laughs> like in Minnesota, even the cat calls are courteous. <laughs> so kind of him. 
Um, my name's Lainey, which, which is short for Elena, and I asked my mom why she named me that. And she said, well, when you were born, I thought you were going to look exotic. Okay. And I said, why? And she said, well, when you were born, you were really jaundiced. Like, that's how white my family is. I came out a little off-white, and they were like, we got a regular Chiquita banana here. Si se puede, Elena. Vaya con Dios. So I, I turned out looking like this. Um, but I did, did you get, did anybody see that movie Zero Dark Thirty? You can make noise if you want. Um, it's like a personal decision, but if I do this a little more, maybe it'll help, I don't know. Um, anyway, I saw that, you've seen it. <laughs> you've seen it. Um, I saw that movie this weekend, Zero Dark Thirty, but I got a little confused. Uh, it wasn't what I expected because I thought it was called Zero Dark Flirty. You know, because the synopsis says it, it said it was like one of the greatest manhunts in history. <laughs> I was like, round them up, let's go, girls. Oh, not that kind of manhunt. All right, leaving the theater. <laughs> let's just see Magic Mike again. <laughs> it's cool, Channing Tatum. Uh, but um, what else was I going to talk about? Oh yeah, I had a boyfriend once, and. Uh, that's not, even, that's not an exaggeration, it's just one time, it happened, it's this, remember? It's this. Um, but so anyway, I had a boyfriend once and he had red hair and he was really insecure about it because people love to make fun of redheads. And I don't get it because like I'm into that kind of thing, you know? I like the idea that if we're making out at any moment, I could imagine you as a clown. Hong <laughs> Kong, you got me, Bubbles! <laughs> It got confusing though, because I had to like plan all this stuff in our relationship, which was not cool, you know? So on the weekends, I had to be like, well, why don't we go hop in your car, pick up 20 of your closest friends, we'll split a six pack of balloons. I got sick of being the ringleader, that's all. You guys, I'm aware that that joke's not very funny, but there's something in me that just makes me want to tell jokes about the circus. So I just want you to know you've been saved from most of my circus material. And that's all you got. So let's just, whoa, ride the crazy train to the end of my set. Oh, but, um, God, have you, have you guys ever heard of the game Settlers of Catan? Yeah, Dan's clapping because we're close personal friends and he wants me to succeed in life. Oh, um, so the game Settlers of Catan is a board game where you are, um, you are trying to acquire the most territory by trading resources, and whoever gets the most uh, has the biggest kingdom, and then they win. So you'll have like a really exciting exchange, like I'll give you three lumber for four wood, or three lumber for four sheep, lumber, wood, huh. uh, and then your friend will go, okay. And uh, I think in that game, the most valuable resource is fun, because nobody has any, <laughs> which is good. I'm gonna leave you with this one. People say stupid things, you guys. Things like, dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> That's my motto, dance like nobody's watching. <laughs> That's stupid. And I'm not gonna follow that advice because it's completely illegal to be naked in public. <laughs> I'm Lady Leonard, have a good night. Lady Lennox, my close personal friend. Let's get your next comic up here. Uh, very good guy too, uh, Ryan Padilla. Thanks a lot, everybody. Keep it going for me, actually. Let's keep it going a little bit, huh? <laughs> Thanks a lot. I, uh, I got a word for you guys to Google search here. I don't know if anybody's ever heard of this, a dendrophiliac. It's actually a real thing. A dendrophiliac is a person that's sexually attracted to trees. <laughs> it's actually true. A person that's sexually attracted to trees is dendrophiliac. I'm not even shocked there's people out there that screw trees. I'm just more amazed there's enough people out there that screw trees as a name for tree fuckers. <laughs> when you get like a guy sitting in a room looking up tree porn, just scrolling through, and he comes across a picture of a guy having sex with a little baby tree, <laughs> he's like, oh my god, turn it off. That's disgusting. <laughs> So we're back to normal tree porn. That's way too weird. <laughs> Can't watch him take advantage of that little sampling like that. They say that uh, they say that women decide in the first 12 seconds of meeting a man 
if they would ever date him or not, right ladies? In the first 12 seconds of meeting a man, you can size him up and decide if he'd ever date him or not. Is actually true. They say that men decide pretty much all the important decisions in the world, so. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of awkward. Tell you guys this story. Um, I love my mom to pieces, right? We all love our moms to pieces, but I don't know what it is about moms, but for some reason, like when they're trying to help you, sometimes they just annoy the shit out of you. Am I right? <laughs> Like, I recently made the mistake of telling my mom, you know, she's like, how are you doing? I'm like, well, truthfully, mom, I'm kind of stressed out. I'm having a little bit of anxiety lately. She's like, well, I'm not just the thing for you. You know, I thought she was going to slip me like a Xanax or something like that. No. I'm like, mom, yeah, I'm having a little bit of anxiety. She's like, I got just the thing for you. They're these self-help CDs, the power of now. They're just amazing. They've done wonders for me. <laughs> I'm like, no, mom, it's not really my thing. Well, she drops it off anyways, right? So they sat on my shelf for about a week. About a week later, I come home after work, I'm having a nervous breakdown, I see the CDs, I'm like, you know what, fuck it, I'll try it, right? So I pop the first CD in, about five minutes into it, I'm starting to relax, I'm starting to hear this guy, it's starting to make sense, right? I'm actually liking it. About 10 minutes into the CD, the fucking thing starts skipping. <laughs> so I take the CD out, I put the next one in, the next one starts skipping, so now I'm more pissed off than I was in the first place. So I look at the bottom of the CDs, they're all scratched up, and I call my mom, I'm like, yo, mom, these self-help CDs you gave me are scratched up, they keep skipping. She's like, oh, sweetheart, I know. I'm sorry they're skipping, but that's part of it. You just gotta power through it. It's the power of now. There we go. All right, mom, thanks a lot. I'll leave you guys with this here. Uh, I love my dogs. I love the dog park, right? Who doesn't? Dog park's a great pastime. My biggest pet peeve about the dog park, though, is people are way too proud of themselves for rescuing animals. I mean, no offense against people who rescue animals, it's just my dog's not a rescue. Every time I go to the dog park, people always ask me if my dog's a rescue, just they like flip around and tell me that their dog's a rescue. Because I was there the other day and this lady's like, so, uh, is your dog a rescue? I'm like, no. She's like, oh, because my dog's a rescue. His name's BB, he's six years old, he needed a $1,500 hip replacement, no one would do it. But we paid it and we saved his life. I felt like saying, wow, you are a saint. You're also an idiot. Apparently you didn't know you could buy that same dog brand new for $400 on the internet. <laughs> Actually, do I got time for one more? Is that, I think, one, I think I got time for one more. This is really probably not gonna be a good one to end on, but uh, they say that nice guys never win, which I think is true. Nice guys never do win. I'm a pretty nice guy, I never win shit. But uh, that's why now whenever I buy a Powerball ticket, from the day I buy the Powerball ticket, I just stop holding the door open for elderly people. <laughs> I don't give a shit if it's a dark, dark bus with 50 of them coming off that motherfucker. I'm out of there. And when they announce the numbers, if I do actually win the lottery, I will never hold the door open for another elderly person again in the world. Because <laughs> I've proved my point. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thanks a lot, everybody. Keep that going for your next comment. Everybody give it up for Emily Johnson. Very funny. Keep it going. All right. Hi, everybody. Um, I recently took the time to sit down and, like, analyze my relationships. Because mine aren't necessarily very successful, if you will. And I realized, I realized that... I find these guys that are always like, hey, let's so bring some people back with us. And I'm, you know, if you're into that, that's okay. I'm fine with that. But no, I, nope, not interested. Not at all. But not even kind of. And he's like, oh, you know, we go to these people, bring them back, entice us into, entice them into our bed. And all I hear is our bed. I'm like, oh my god, he really likes me. <laughs> he just called it our bed. <laughs> he mostly really likes me, right? I, uh, I, I think it's interesting, too, that we're supposed to, like, keep track of this date, like, like an anniversary. Like, I, like, I don't, a girlfriend called me and was like, Emily, when you puked down the rice street and we met that weird little guy and we proceeded to talk to him on a date, that was on Tuesday. That was on Tuesday? Sorry, you kidding me? How am I supposed to remember? How am I? I'm, anyways. Um, <laughs> Maybe I'm bitter though. That's just, maybe I'm bitter, I don't know. Because the word boyfriend to me is as foreign a word as dad. 
Oh, I love the girl and I like to get the girl man and I didn't get it. I uh, I work I work as a uh, nursing assistant and because of that I live somewhat of a double life. So when I walk into work, I rub the hangover out of my eye and I place the halo on really quick. Because when I get in there and people are like, what'd you do this weekend? I can't be like, well, I got off work, I got stoned, I got shit faced. Uh, woke up the next day around three, dropped some acid, fucking drip all for eight hours, got up again and got shit faced, and now it's Monday morning, 7 a.m., and I'm trying to make sure that people don't die. I can't do that. So I have to do the whole, like, oh, you know, I stay at home with girlfriends, we drank wine, it's fun. We looked at Etsy, found really cute stuff. So that's what girls do, I guess. I'm not sure. I spend my eight hours just constantly trying not to barf. Like, the only light in my day is my lunch break. Like, I think it's funny, too, when people are like, God, I have such a shitty job. I'm like, you have a shitty job. <sighs> Come with me. Um, sorry. Um, it, okay. Um, as I'm getting older, like I was always the 15 year old that they're like, you go buy the cigarettes. You look old enough, you know? And now I'm like, I'm 27 and I get, uh, I get like a, so you're 19, right? And it's like, fuck man, like I want to be taken seriously. Like I want people to think I'm older because I already have that huge hurdle of being a woman. That puts a damper on, that's not funny, that's new. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna end with this. I would never ever cheat on my boyfriend, ever. But it never hurts to look at Match.com. All right, thank you. I'm Emily Johnson, have a great night. Oh, she's got it, Emily Johnson, everybody. Our next comic once called me uh, Cokehead Lumberjack from this very stage. <laughs> to be fair, I was wearing plaid. Uh, but uh, guys, give it up for him. Uh, because I'm going to call him the, uh, the phonesiest baloney, Mr. Robert Phones. Yeah. Um, it's good to be back here. I haven't done comedy in a while. Uh, I've been sick and out of town. Uh, I spent my, my holidays in Baltimore, uh, which is great because I think everybody should go to Baltimore just so you know what it's like to be terrified of a city just on every level. Baltimore is, is weird. And like you hear people say things about like Chicago, like people who come from Chicago, they're like, oh, I'm from Chicago. The streets there are really tough. Fuck Chicago, okay? <laughs> Chicago was the girl in high school that couldn't wait to tell you how dark she was. You know what I mean? She would say shit like, oh, I'm into light bondage and the nightmare before Christmas. <laughs> I listen to the Dresden Dolls. Fuck that girl, okay? Baltimore is the girl in high school that you didn't know was crazy because she never said a word. She just sat at her desk and like burned Bible verses into her leg with a hot safety pin. Just listened to Ave Maria on repeat and climaxed every time a high note got hit. Like, Baltimore is weird. Um, I'm 23 years old, which uh, it's not really old and it's not really young. I'm just kind of in this weird limbo. Like I'm. I'm young enough that nobody expects anything from me and nobody holds me to any level of accountability, but like, I'm old enough that I know that the way that I choose to live my life is just unacceptable. <laughs> it's not cool anymore. I can't keep pulling this shit. Um, I had like that realization the other day because I was, I was making myself dinner and I was making Kraft macaroni and cheese, uh, which, you know, I, I think that's an indicator you're a fucking man-child. I don't know what is. But I was making Kraft macaroni and cheese, and the noodles were shaped like cartoon characters, which is bad, but I didn't recognize any of the cartoon characters they were shaped like. That's the cutoff right there. That, you know you can't eat mac and cheese after that point. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, it's weird. I feel like, I feel like I'm just in this this weird phase where I'm floating through life. Like, I feel like my imagination is starting to die, uh, which is not something that, it's not good. Uh, there's this thing called ironic process theory, and I don't know if anybody's familiar with it. I'll explain it. Uh, essentially what it is, it's pretty standard. It's the more you try to suppress thoughts, the more prominent they'll become in your imagination. 
Okay, so if I said to you, don't think about elephants, you're gonna think about elephants. That's just how your brain works. And like, I have that, like everybody else, but instead of picturing an elephant in like the Serengeti with its majestic tusks and shit like that, I picture like a Windows 97 clip art elephant. <laughs> just like a purple elephant with a top hat going like this. <laughs> like the shittiest PowerPoint presentation in your office would have. Just elephants never forget and neither do good employees to observe proper dress code. Like that's happening in my brain and it's not okay. Um, I spend a lot of time on the computer. Uh, I love Craigslist misconnections. Does anybody here read Craigslist misconnections? Okay, fuck you. <laughs> Craig's, I love Craigslist misconnections. I think that there's something about them that just appeals to everybody's inner romantic. You know what I mean? Not now. <laughs> just like the idea that like out there in the world, somebody would see you, you'd have a complete chance encounter with a stranger, and they'd seek you out, and they'd write about it on the internet, and you'd find them, and they'd find you. It's, it's a beautiful idea. It's like a Jennifer Aniston movie. <laughs> the truth is, though, like a Jennifer Aniston movie, the reality does not match up with the fantasy. Like, the reality of Craigslist is a fucking horror show. If Craigslist was personified, it would just be a room full of naked dudes in chairs going, Ugh, I saw you at Starbucks. You didn't know I was watching you, but I was. I don't know why my jerking off voice sounds like Popeye. <laughs> that, that says something more about me. I'm not going to explore that on stage. But uh, my favorite Craigslist misconnection, I remember it verbatim, because I don't know Long Division, but I remember this. Uh, it was entitled Last Friday, and the entirety of the text was, Hey, I went down on you in the Stella's Fish Cafe bathroom last Friday. <laughs> Let's hang out sometime. And then there was a little winky emoticon, you know, just in case you couldn't penetrate those multiple levels of Twain-esque wordplay. And like, I was reading that and it like struck me, at what point do you lose the right to say it was missed? You know what I mean? Like, missed implies that external forces stepped in and like prevented that thing from getting carried out to its inclusion. That's as far as it should have gone. Like, Cinderella had a missed connection. You stuck some frat boy semi-flaccid penis in your mouth in the public restroom of a seafood cafe. Don't fucking dress it up. And the other part, connection, that seems a little bit presumptuous, you know what I mean? Like, I don't think in 20 years that guy's gonna be sitting at a bar with his friend going, oh, Scott, I'll tell you, man, she was the one that got away. <laughs> <sighs> Whenever I smell that particular combination of urinal cakes, Axe body spray, and crab meat, I'm taken back to that magical summer in 2012. <laughs> Truly, that was a missed connection. Thank you so much, guys. I'm Robert Fonz. All right, guys. Our next comic, another guy, very funny guy, good friend of mine too. I bring it up for Andrew Carpenter. I, uh, I'm not gonna be myself. <laughs> is that guy? Is he okay? Like. Should we be worried? I'm worried. Um, I'm getting fat. Thank you. You know you're getting fat when uh, when your socks when your socks start uh, cutting off your circulation. Yeah, when your socks don't fit. When you're having problems. When your socks may cause medical issues. That is when you know you may be getting a little overweight. <laughs> That's just something I came up with today. Thank you. Thank you very much. It's an open mic. I'm sexually frustrated, folks. That's right. Laugh it up, bitches. It's all right, though. I'm going to reach out and do something that I have not done in a long time. I'm going to get my computer fixed. <laughs> That's right. Because I'll tell you something right now, if I'm paying to use a computer at Kinko's, they need to give me maybe my own private office. I learned that as I was getting arrested. 
I don't have any kids. I have no kids. I'm not married. I have no kids. My friends are all having kids. Fucking kids are expensive to raise. Like, from what I hear, I guess you got to buy a lot of stuff for them. It's weird that <laughs> my friend sent me a picture of his cute little, like, seven-year-old kid. And uh, she had, like, nine dolls around her. And they were, like, these American girl dolls. And they cost, like, $130 a doll or something ridiculous. And I'm thinking, my God, did she, why does she, A, why does she need nine of them? And then, B, like, why would somebody spend that much money on something that, that they know their kid's going to outgrow and be disinterested in in the next couple of years, you know? But then I thought, oh, wait, shit, my parents did that. My parents did that. Violin lessons. Big wheels, you guys remember big wheels? You know? College? <laughs> yeah. Just disinterested in that after about a year. I learned how to grow weed though, which is cool. Um, I don't know, man. I'm, I'm, lon I'm a lonely comic and it's a... Uh, <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm not lonely. I travel. I've been traveling a lot this year, uh, last year and this year, uh, and I'm very grateful for that. Uh, for I travel for this job. I know I do it full time. <laughs> I know. I don't know why either. <laughs> um, and it's weird to keep myself occupied on the road, but I like to read billboard signs, billboard signs that are kind of strange. I saw one of the weirdest billboard signs that was in the state of... Minnesota. <laughs> Go figure. <laughs> We're nuts. It said, uh, if you're having an inappropriate thought about a child, please call 1 800 prevent. And I was just taken back. And I thought to myself, the first thing I thought, I thought, oh my God, who's answering those calls? <laughs> Sick. <laughs> I'll tell you who's answering those calls right now. It's Scott! <laughs> Scott's are <laughs> It's that or it's that freaking, what's his name? Uh, Chris Hansen from the Catch a Predator and shit. He's like, that's my new thing now. I put billboards up and that's like, we catch them. Like, <laughs> making a phone call, like, <laughs> yes, what's your address again? <laughs> what's your phone number? Because it's not licensed psychotherapist answering that fucking call. <laughs> Come on, folks. Because I called it. No, <laughs> I just, I didn't call. I did call it. <laughs> I was bored and drunk on the road. What are you going to do, man? <laughs> All right. Am I done? Does that mean I'm done? <laughs> you're like, no, you're really done. <laughs> My name's Andrew Carpenter. Thanks so much. Have a great night, guys. Andrew Carpenter, everybody. Everybody give it up for Josh Flohog, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Give it up for yourselves for watching all the comics you saw tonight. Give it up for them. Big round of applause for all 47 comics you saw tonight. So I had a letterman jacket in high school, because I know what the ladies like. But I had my letterman jacket for cheerleading, so I kind of just knew what the drama school boys liked. <laughs> I was a cheerleader. There were, there were some perks to being a straight cheerleader. Like I got to have sex with some of the cheerleading girls, but I looked like Rusty from National Lampoons. So it wasn't the cheerleading girls you guys are thinking of. Basically, I slept my way through the whole bottom two rungs of the pyramid. <laughs> Remember the girl that wanted to be a linebacker in high school? That's who I took the problem my mom's Hyundai accent. Our team was awful, too. I don't even know why I cheered. Like, we cheered to not get shut out. Some schools are sponsored by Gatorade. We were sponsored by Pedialyte. Play like a baby with the Fighting Falcons. There's five of us guy cheerleaders. We were all straight in high school. Um, I'm 26 now, there's two of us left. <laughs> it's like Highlander, but with a lot more dick. 
I always wondered how my parents felt about me. I remember one time at breakfast, my mom came up to me and she goes, Josh, I have an interview today. Does this dress go with these shoes and this handbag? And I'm like, Mom, how am I supposed to know? She's like, I watch Queer Eye for the straight guy. You know. I was like, Mom, I have a girlfriend who you've met. She's like, oh, my girlfriend? I thought this girl came on and listened to Justin Timberlake with you and talked about boys. And I was like, Mom, we do that, but afterwards we still have sex. And I feel bit bad for my dad especially. Like, I'm my dad's first son. At least with adoption, you get to shop around. Like, nobody goes into an adoption clinic and is like, hey, that boy over there in the dress, is he still going to cry at 26 years old when he has to take the fish off the hook? Despite what he told me on the drive up here? <laughs> yeah, I want him. I didn't play real sports growing up. Um, my dad was my coach. For the same reason I think a lot of dads coach Little League, because he got a DUI during hunting season. <laughs> Had to work off community service during Little League season. It was great, though. We really bonded, you know, because we rode our bikes together to the liquor store and then to practice. By the fifth inning and a lot of coaching juice, he'd get really into it. He'd be like, stay in the baselines, you homo. And I'm like, Dad, if you would have stayed in the lines, we both wouldn't have to be here today. <laughs> get to be at home baking with mom like I wanted to. I went to culinary school after high school because I wanted to keep my parents guessing. But I went to school for restaurant management. My roommate went to school to be a chef. So it's like every dinner was like Iron Chef, except for we were still poor. It was like today's secret ingredients are beef top ramen and mustard. <laughs> and by the fourth course, everybody's getting diarrhea. <laughs> I didn't go to school for restaurant management. Um, I got to do a lot of wine tasting in school, which sounds great. But my class was at 7 AM. No matter how many times you write it, McDonald's egg McMuffins don't pair well with anything. And your parents aren't proud of you when you call them to tell them about your A at 9 in the morning wasted. I'm like, no, Mom, you don't get it. I got an A. She's like, Josh, you need AA. And I'm like, I'll look that up when I'm done driving home. <laughs> My dad, on the other hand, couldn't be more proud. Figured a family full of alcoholics, finally somebody got a degree in it. <laughs> I didn't see him a lot as a kid, but now that I'm a bartender, the only time I can get him to leave is last call. I have a girlfriend now. We're in what you call a long-term relationship, meaning she can't afford the lease on her own. <laughs> I love living with her. The only problem I have is um, us sleeping together, like us sharing the bed, not the sex we get to have every now and again. But um, here's the deal. She's a little five-foot girl, and she sleeps in the middle of the bed because she has an irrational fear of falling off it. And the reason I call it an irrational fear is because we can't afford a bed frame. It's like a nine and a half inch fall. So she sleeps in the middle of the bed and then we have a dog that stretches out like an asshole version of that guy from Fantastic Four that shits in our living room. So I'm left with like half a park bench to sleep on. Like I try to get in fights so I can sleep on the couch. I'm like, that was pretty screwed up what I did back there. Sure you don't want me to sleep on the couch? She's like, no, that was really screwed up. You're sleeping in here with me. We don't get to have sex as much as we used to now that we live together because she can see how disgusting I am. Like I didn't know playing video games in my underwear till 3 p.m. every day wasn't attractive as I thought it was. <laughs> like the other day I walked by the mirror and saw myself without a shirt on and I wanted to go buy her flowers. <laughs> That's what this looks like naked. <laughs> I felt like I did something wrong. Now I gotta do stuff around the house now like, um, I bought a Swiffer the other day because it's been a little while. And I don't know what the hell this thing does, but I Swiffer the living room, the dishes, and our dog. She's like, that's a good job. Maybe we'll have sex later. And I'm like, I left those dishes in there three weeks ago. I'm going to need a little more than maybe later. But I always get work life and home life confused, you guys. Um, I'm a bartender. I let a cleaning around the bar. I was sitting in my boss's office. And he's like, Josh, you did a really good job today. I'm like, did I do a good job, good job, or a blow job, good job? Where are we at here? And that's when he made me lock the door behind me. And I've been employed a month for the last nine months. <laughs> me and my girlfriend have been talking about marriage a lot lately, which is really weird because there's a lot of differences between me and her, like that she wants to get married and I don't. 
Her family's from India, so they're Hindu. And I look like powder, so I'm obviously not. <laughs> and she's like, Josh, I just don't think you get my religion. And I'm like, no, honey, I completely get it. I play video games. You die and come back, right? <laughs> I couldn't do the whole Hindu thing. Because they have arranged marriages. And um, for the record, her parents didn't pick me out as the arranged marriage. <laughs> they were like, you didn't clean your room or your vegetables as a kid. What would you expect we'd get you? <laughs> I couldn't do the arranged marriage thing because I can't trust my parents to pick me out Christmas gifts when I circle a Best Buy ad. Um, I can't have them pick out the person I'm going to spend the next five to seven years of my life with and give half my shit to. <laughs> she tricked me the other day. Um, I took her to get her nose pierced because I've been just basically buying her jewelry that isn't an engagement ring for five years. And right now she's like one necklace away from being Mr. T. <laughs> so I had to come up with something different, so I took her to get her nose pierced. And then after I did it, I found out in the Indian culture, when a woman gets her nose pierced, that means she's ready to get married. Which I was confused by, because in America, it just means she's kind of slutty. <laughs> like I said, I'm a bartender. Um, I have to have that job. Like, I couldn't work a real job. Like, I couldn't do manual labor or anything. I don't even know how to change a tire on my car. I got a flat tire, and I called AAA and waited a full hour for them to come change it. That's the kind of man I am. <laughs> I did it, and the tow truck driver got out of the car, and he was confused because he saw me. Probably was expecting some, some girl or something. And he just looked me in the eye, and he goes, couldn't you just change it yourself? Like, the only way he could have emasculated me more is if he would have made me put on a dress and go wait in his car. <laughs> I put on the dress, but I waited in my own car. I don't want to have to pass that down to my kids. Like, I don't want that to be a trait. Like, I have to tell my kids how big of a pussy I am. Like, I was hanging out with my dad, and this is what made me realize I didn't want to have kids. Is he, he was a big basketball player. Um, his school won the national championship, and he made the game-winning shot. He's telling me that legendary story. And I don't want to have to kids tell kids my legacy story of me as a cheerleader. I don't want to have to sit my son down and be like, son, we were up by six. And they're on the 10. And we need a defense. And your old man knew how to spell it in a megaphone. <laughs> uh, I've been kind of conflicted about the whole marriage thing. And then they just had the gay marriage amendment, which was really weird. Because, because like, only am I hearing it at home. Now I've got to see it on billboards and stuff. And I was really weird and conflicted on how I was going to vote. Because I know that I want to get married so little that I knew that there's probably some gay guy in my position using that as his out to not have to marry his boyfriend. <laughs> like, he's like, I'd really love to, but it's illegal. <laughs> I'm going to leave you guys on this. Um, like I said, I'm a bartender. And everybody always asks me the same question. They're like, Josh, I bet it's really hard to go through airport security. And I don't get why. Because I'm not just white. I'm America white. I could walk through airport security with a bomb and a gun, and they'd be like, eh, red, white, and blue, let them through. <laughs> like I said, my girlfriend's from India, so they give her a strip search, a pat down, and a reach around. And I'm like, hey, man, I have to swift her to get half of that. Where do I get an application? <laughs> my name's Josh Paul. Give us up a good night. <laughs> Josh Floorhug, everybody, your headliner for the evening. Yeah, keep it going for him. And that is the evening. Show is done. Thank you guys so much for coming out tonight. We really appreciate it. Uh, give it up for all the comics you've seen.